Welcome to The War from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Today we're going to play you an episode of a series called The Doctor Fights. This was a summer replacement series that aired over CBS, uh, both in the summer of 1944 and the summer of 1945, focusing on the contribution of doctors and their service in the war. Many episodes featured their uh, heroics in the midst of combat. Today's episode focuses on a different sort of service, service after the fighting has ceased. Uh, the war would leave many people uh, dead, but it also would leave many alive but uh, wounded, having to readjust to serious injuries and, in some cases, the loss of limbs. They still had the opportunity to live a full life, and it was the job of doctors in medical facilities uh, to help uh, them to take advantage of that opportunity. Today's story highlights uh, one of those men, uh, Captain Henry Cl Kessler of the Marine Corps. Uh, this was the third episode in the uh, 1945 series of Doctor Fights. Uh, original air date uh, was June the 19th, 1945, and the title was Mare Island and Back. <laughs> Laboratories presents The Doctor Fight, starring Lieutenant Commander Robert Montgomery, United States Naval Reserve, in a thrilling true story of a doctor in World War II. The Doctor Fight, starring Robert Montgomery. has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. is the prayer of every doctor. It is ages old, and yet today it is as new as the heroism of tomorrow's battle. This is a doctor at war. <laughs> Shenley Laboratories voiced the wish of all America that victory in the Pacific soon will be ours. When that day comes, this war will end for most of the men fighting today. But for some of those now serving on the battlefront, their fight will never end. These men are America's physicians for whom the battle against disease goes on endlessly. No development in recent medical history has given the doctor such aid in his fight, both in war and civilian use, as penicillin. The story of how this drug, so difficult to prepare in quantity, was first produced in sufficient amount for the Army and Navy and then finally in quantity enough for most civilian needs, is a tribute to the 22 great industrial companies who turned their facilities to the demanding task of penicillin production. Shenley Laboratories is indeed proud to have been among those firms permitted to produce penicillin. Tonight, Mare Island and back is the true story of Captain Henry H. Kessler, the man who has done so much to return seriously wounded men to a normal, happy life. We will meet Captain Kessler in person later in our program. And now, The Doctor Fights, starring Robert Montgomery. Now hear this, you blessed ones. You lucky ones sitting in your bedrooms with ten pink toenails to clear... And you in your kitchens opening a bottle with two living hands. Now hear this. And you especially who sit by the loudspeakers and smoke, having but recently learned how to open a pack of cigarettes with one hand. Hear this.
This is Sam Logan's story. Captain Sam Logan. United States Marines. He was feeling good that morning. Plenty of sky over Guadalcanal, and the smoke of the guns didn't come up this high. Might have been Florida below. It was so clean up here. And the clouds washed his wings as he banked left to circle the island. This was the life. This was the joy of it. This was Sam Logan's life. The beginning and the end of it. To wish for a cloud and be there. To yearn for higher air and climate on the hot back of an engine. Leveling off now, he dipped a wing to the boys below to show them he was there with his big hand over them. And then he saw the sun and saw the speck on it and grinned like a boy. And the clouds moved under to make a floor he could fight on. It came like a black stone, growing, sprouting wings now, firing now, the sun like a mirror shining in his eyes. Something went past. He banked hard right, the strong right leg on the pedal. open hard with the wind sucking. Horizon over his left ear now, the wind on his head like a hammer as he stands on his seat and walks out and slides down the sky. One, two, three, four. Sam Logan gripped the steel handle of his chest. Eight, nine. His shoulders jerked and he grinned again. Far below he saw the sea between his legs like a great pillow. And then... And then it came. The zero turning back, nosing up toward him, the sun flashing like water on the prop. Angry, squirming upward like a snake. Sam Logan hung from his parachute, and the Japanese pilot, husbanding his imperial cartridges, performed a successful but unnecessary amputation 2,000 feet above the sea. And Sam Logan's right leg flew in a high and bloody arc and followed him down, while the zero propeller dripping, move northward toward Japan. Well, that's tough, but consider yourself lucky, Logan. Yeah? Sure. Take little Henry here. I wasn't even supposed to be out here. I had too many independents. Wife and two kids. Had it all figured. I'm safe. All right, so I'm in. I figure, well, I get myself in the band. No violins allowed. Quartermaster. Ain't fat enough. Air Corps. Too fat. <laughs> Landing barges? Just right. <laughs> when we get back in the States, I'm going to get up in the morning, my kids tie my shoes, my wife puts on my hat, and I... Go sell my apples. Toss you for the intersection of 42nd and Broadway, Logan. Or are you going to corner the Macintosh market? That doctor said he'd put a hand on you, didn't he? You can't tie your shoes with a hook. What are you going to do? Give it any thought? I don't know. I want to see that doctor. What's his name? Kessler? He ain't nice, that doctor, but he can't grow you nothing you can put a shoe on. Well, at least we only got one missing, Luke. Yeah, which just about puts me right behind the eight ball. Man, I heard the way you lost you that shoe. I didn't lose it. I gave it. Yeah? Well, whatever you did, you ain't got it, bud. What'd you do, Luke? Farmer? Yeah, that's all I ever did. And there ain't no corner to sell apples on in Clay County. I heard those artificial legs are pretty good the way they got them down. Yeah, but I ain't pitching no artificial hay. And I ain't plowing no artificial ground, neither. It was tough enough with two legs. I just hope to God they never let me out of this hospital. That's all I hope. Here's Dr. Kessler, Logan. Morning, boys. Morning, Morning, Morning Doctor. Kessler. Hot in here, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. Some of that new Hebrides ozone. Why didn't you open that window next to your chair, Henry? I can't open that window. It needs two hands. It'll open with one and a half. Try it. Let's see it, Henry. There it is. But there is of it. Oh, it looks nice. Ah, uh, pretty. Could have been worse, Henry. I know. Every morning I thank God it wasn't my head. <laughs> what head? 
Henry, when you get back to the States, they'll do a fancy operation on you. Fix you up with a hand that you can open and close just by thinking. You won't have to move your shoulders to operate it. It works right off your own muscles. No, all you have to do is to learn how to think. <laughs> That's great, Doctor. Now, look here. I appreciate it, Doctor, but you don't have to kid me. I'm a truck driver. Ten ton max. How am I going to drive a truck with a tin hand? You can do it with a tin hand, but you can't do it with a tin brain. I appreciate it, Doctor. But I ain't kidding myself. Okay. It's your funeral. Luke, take that cover off. Let me see the leg. Don't hurt anymore, sir. Hardly. Well, no reason why it should. Yeah. Looks fine. Cover up. Tell me, boy, you got the farm waiting for you back home, haven't you? I can't go back to that farm, sir. They can't afford to feed me. Why, are you tired of working? Oh, no, sir, but I can't... I'll talk to you about it later. Let's see it, Logan. Feels peculiar. Raise it. Feels funny. How's it look? All right. Cover up. Move over. Let me sit on your bed. How am I doing? Is it healing, sir? Yes, coming together in great shape. I've been wanting to talk to you, Logan. What are your plans? Plans for what? They'll fit you with an artificial leg back in the States. The thing I'm interested in is the kind of work that you want to do. Maybe you can get started on it in the hospital by the time you're a civilian. Oh, well, I'm going to fly, sir. You're going to fly. That's right. Uh, that's a pretty damn nice way of taking it, Logan. I'm glad you feel that way. How long will it take for me to get a leg? Oh, a few months. You'll have plenty of time to get used to it, and then, I don't know, maybe a commercial line will give you a chance. Well, I'm not interested in commercial flying. I'm going back into combat. I see. Did you, uh... you ever know anybody with an artificial leg? No, but... I know what you mean, sir, but it doesn't apply to me. I'll be able to walk, won't I? Definitely. Well, if I walk, I can fly. And if I can fly, I can fly combat. <laughs> All right. I don't think it's ever been done in this man's Navy, but... who knows? Maybe nobody tried. I'll see you later, Logan. See you later, boys. That was Sam Logan. Of course, he'd never fly, certainly not for Navy combat. In the beginning, I berated myself for not telling him the truth, and every day I made up my mind to tell him. But it kept getting harder and harder. I'd come into the ward, and he'd be smiling up at me with that kid grin on his face, and whenever we'd talk... You know, when I get a plane, Doctor, I'm going to take you up and turn you over so many times you'll think you drank a gallon of high octane. I'll show you a power dive like you never... And another time, when we were alone... I was just reading about these jet propulsion jobs. Man, that's for me. They'll never touch us in those babies. 700... One day, I went out to the field that was a few miles from the hospital. I knew a major there. We were old friends. That's right, Captain. This is the kind of fighter he was flying. Yeah, well, I, I'd, I'd like to look in the cockpit. Well, here, step right up. There you are, and I'll hoist in. What's up? Well, I just wanted to feel the, these pedals. How, how far does this pedal go? Oh, go ahead and press it. Uh-huh. Major, I want your opinion. What would you say to a man flying one of these in combat with one artificial leg? Impossible. Now, wait a minute. He's got the action of his knee. It's just from the knee down. Couldn't do it. I doubt that he'll fly, and he'd certainly never make combat. He's a remarkable kid, Major. He's all guts. That wouldn't help, Captain. I'm not a doctor. I'm a flyer. But I don't believe that a man is ever going to time the use of an artificial leg so that he can go into combat and come out alive. That leg's got to respond, Captain. A man's got to act on the split tail of a Is there second. any rule against it that you know of? Well, uh, there isn't any rule against a blind man flying either. But we don't give them airplanes. But there's no rule? No. No, but it just won't work. No, I wouldn't let him kid himself, Captain. He's got all the flying medals he's ever going to get. Yeah, get your Macintoshes all red, all right. Five apiece, help the veteran. Yeah. How's that? Fanta Logan? Great. Henry, why don't you shut up? What do you mean? Dr. Kessler says you should practice up on what you're going to be in life. I'm doing my occupational therapy. We're going back to the States today. Buck up, old boy. Free ocean cruise. You know, Luke, I think his mother must have been thinking of Santa Claus. <laughs> boy, I sure hope they don't put me out of the hospital. That's all I hope. Hello, doctor. When are we leaving? Hi. 
About an hour. Get out of here, will you, boys? I want to talk to Logan. Go ahead, Henry. Give Luke a push. Yeah. Hey, don't you think we make a great pair, Doctor? He could carry the pencils in the tin cup, and I push him. <laughs> You're breaking my heart. Get out of here. <laughs> You're going to, uh, Mare Island Hospital, Logan, in California. Swell. I heard about that place. I won't be with you for a while, so I want to tell you a few things. First of all, I'm not sure that you'll ever fly again. No, sir, I've got to fly. Wait a minute now. You see, Luke and Henry here, they've made up their minds that they can't do anything. That's a bad attitude, obviously. But it's just as bad for a man to think that he can do everything. If I and... can't fly, I might as well be dead. Now, you cut that no, out. No, sir, that's the way I feel. I was just getting hot. I was just getting good. Tell me this. Before you started to think about flying, what were you interested in? Nothing. Oh, come on now. When I was six or seven years old, my dad drove us out to the flying field. You know where they took you up for a dollar? Well, when I saw one of those planes go up, that's when I knew. And I never changed. Not for five minutes. Good enough. Now, listen to me. Supposing I were God. God of the Navy and the Marines. <laughs> Would you have trouble? <laughs> oh, you said it. But just supposing... Supposing I had the power to put you in a plane and send you into combat, and you got in and took off, and after five minutes in the air, you realized that you couldn't make it. You came down, and... You see what I mean? I want you to have something to fall back on, an ace in the hole. I realize what you're saying, sir. I don't want you to think that it's completely out. I know what you want me to think. I'd just like to tell you something, sir. You deal with hundreds of crippled men every week. And maybe after a while, you begin to look at them as though they felt crippled. What do you mean? I sit here looking out of this window, and I see the sky, and I see the planes going over, and I feel like Sam Logan, that's all. The same way I ever felt when I saw planes fly. I look different, but I feel the same. And I hope to God they're going to treat me in the States the way I feel. Not the way I look. You think I've treated you that way? You've been all right, but I still don't think you realize what a man can do if he's got to do it. You know, it's funny. Ever since I became a surgeon, I've been trying to make patients understand just that. Then you... You believe that I can fly combat again? You do, don't you? Officially? No. Medically? No. But, well, I'm an official and I'm a medic, so... Good luck to you, Sam. I'll be back, and when I fly over here, I'll buzz you at 50 feet. You do that, boy. Goodbye. It doesn't happen this way very often, but it did this time. Sam Logan left the Hebrides with Henry and Luke, and a little while later, I followed. When I saw the lovely coast... The boys crowding the rail, I caught the longing in their eyes. I remembered Sam Logan's eyes. And as we docked, I felt that I must either do something that was impossible, or Logan was going to have to do it. And that's how it was when I sat with him and the boys in the warm Mare Island sun. Am I glad to see you, Doctor? They got me marked nuts around here. Good judge as a character. Let me see that leg. Yeah. I bumped into a captain I knew in the Pacific, and he says any time I want, I can come out to the field and he'll give me a plane to take up. You don't say. Yeah. I got Henry and Luke working for me, too. Henry's... Here he comes now. Hey, Henry! Yeah. Come over here. Yeah. There's Luke, too. Luke, come here. Oh, Doctor. Hi. How are you doing, huh? Hey, Doctor, I was just talking to a nice... Oh, Doctor. Pull up, Luke. This nice has got an uncle who worked in the Admiral's office, and she's going to tell him to put in a white for Sammy here to get a plane when he's ready. Only thing she says, you've got to put the okay on him first. Why are you paying these fellas, Logan? I promised to name my plane Henry and Luke. And when I get a Mac again, I'm going to paint Sammy over the radiator. When did you change your mind about truck driving? Huh? I didn't change my mind. I just figured if Sam can fly an airplane with one leg, I can drive a truck with a tin hand anyhow. I mean, he ain't that good. Well, they're both crazy, Doctor. Why don't you tell them what's going on? How about you, Luke? You make any arrangements at home? Well, my old man keeps writing when I'm coming. But I discourage him. man that eats and don't work... People ain't going to like him after a while. I ain't going to get myself into none of that. How about it, Doctor, huh? We got another operation, don't we? Well, uh, here's the story. You got a lot of work on your arm, Henry, and we'll start right away. There's just one more surgery for you, Sam, and another session for you, Luke. When I get you all fitted up, we'll start walking up and down stairs and climb some ladders, put you in a car, Henry, and start you driving. Maybe some horseback riding and so on. 
And while this is all going on, Sam, I want you to do some thinking about your future. I understand there's a lot of good jobs in the local aircraft No, plant. sir, I'm going to I'll do the best job I know how to do, Sam. You'll be able to do anything that you want to do in civilian life, and there'll be plenty of jobs in the Marines for you. Sharpening pencils, you mean? I mean, there'll be plenty of jobs. Now, you think about it. You didn't say this in the Hebrides, Doctor. I hoped you'd come to realize it yourself. I can only make you walk. I can't think for you, Sam, and you're not thinking. Oh, no. He thinks all the time, Doctor. They're working over Tokyo day and night. It'll be over soon. I didn't finish what I was supposed to do. I got to finish. I want to finish it. Don't you see how impossible it is? Even with bad teeth, a man can't get into the Air Force. How in the world... I don't care. i got to do it. He's got very good teeth, Doctor. Oh. Well, I'll operate this afternoon. You'll be ready at 4 o'clock. time, Sam Logan was walking, and so was Luke, and Henry was picking up magazines with his new hand. It's no good to put romance into this. It's not right to forget the sadness in this, but they were walking, and Henry was tying his shoes. In fact, he was going around tying everybody's shoes who would let him, and I noticed he forgot about the apple business. And then the thing happened, the thing that always happens... Hey, Sam, give me a hand here. Hey, Paul, come on, come on, quick, get up. Come on, butter toes, get up. What are you, lazy again? I can't, I can't do it. Oh, baloney, you're just lazy again. Up, come on, up. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There, sit him in. Yeah. That's it. Ah, oh, sit down, Luke. What are you trying to pick up cigarette butts for? Cut out. Let me alone, will you? Come on, Luke, we're going for a walk. I ain't walking no more. Staying right here. I ain't getting up again. We're going horseback riding next week. You've got to get in trim. I ain't getting in no trim here. Ain't gonna make no damn fool out of me. I'm sitting here. And I'm gonna keep right on sitting here. You know what you're gonna do? You'll go and disgrace Dr. Kessel. Look at that nice work he did. You wanna go and disgrace the doctor? Oh, Lord. Come on, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Get on your feet. Sam, you talk. Sam. Where did he go now? Oh, there you are, boys. I'd like to talk to you. Ah, oh, right what's on your mind, Doctor? Well, I was planning some things for the three of you next week. You feel up to it? Oh, oh sure. Why not? Boy, look at that plane. That's the same plane I was flying. Look at her tear. Look at her. Heading west, too. When am I going to fly, Doctor? You want to get yourself killed? Sam, you crazy. Doctor, please. Give me a chance. One chance. Get me into a training plane, anything. I'll tell you if I can't do it. I swear I'll tell you. All right, Sam. Doctor, you're not kidding now. I have a light plastic leg I want to fit you with first. Then you'll get used to that and we'll see what we can do. I'm not guaranteeing the Navy is going to give you a plane now. But you'll tell them I can fly. I can only tell them what I know, boy. I know that you want to fly. And I don't know any reason why you shouldn't. The rest is up to them. Hey, and when do I get a car to drive, Doctor? I'll let you know when you're ready, Henry. Well, what do you say, Luke? Uh, I'll wait, Doctor. I'll just wait. <laughs> It's all set, sir. Sorry you can't come along. Well, I'd just like to stick my head in for a minute, Lieutenant. I'll get right up on the wing, sir. Oh, thanks. I got it. Uh, it's all yours now, Sam. How's the leg feel? Just like my own. Don't worry about anything, Doctor. I'll be all right. You say, Doctor. Yeah? I never thanked you for everything. I'd like to thank you. One look at that puss of yours now is enough for me. Let's see you fly, Sam. Step aside, mister. And remember, fly over the hospital. The boys will all be out watching for you. I'll be there in five minutes. 
Make way. three letters now. One is from New York. Part of it says, I knew I'd get mixed up with apples one way or another. I'm delivering them from upstate in a 10-ton Mac. The hand steers fine. You were right. All I got to do is think and it opens and closes. And I know how to think now. Any news from Sam, the flying man? Signed, Henry. The second is from Clay County. My son Luke, it says, is out hoeing now, so I'm taking this opportunity to say that he still feels embarrassed about the trouble he was to you, but is fine and works good. Keeps wondering about a boy name of Logan, and his mother and myself are wondering how he made out finally. Our thanks to you for Luke. And the third letter is from somewhere in the Pacific. Just a quick one, it says... To let you know I am now Major Logan. Hope you're still at Mare Island when I get back because you're not getting out of that ride, I promised you. Button up, Doctor. I'm coming. And the way it looks out here, it'll be soon. P.S. I wrote your name on the leg. Just in case I start forgetting who put me back in the clouds. It's signed, Sam. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Francisco, we now present Captain Henry H. Kessler himself, Director of the Rehabilitation Division of the Naval Hospital at Mare Island. Dr. Kessler will be interviewed by Grant Holcomb. You must have many stories, Captain Kessler, as inspiring and courageous as that of Major Logan. Yes, Grant. The story of Sam Logan is one of my favorites. But there are thousands of others just as good. As a matter of fact... Bob Montgomery and I used to swap a lot of mighty fine stories down there in the New Hebrides. Do you know Commander Montgomery, who portrayed you this evening? Indeed I do. We've spent many an evening visiting in my hut when his cruiser was down in that part of the world. I've gotten quite a chuckle out of sitting here tonight listening to Bob play me. I know he's felt it a privilege to do it, Captain Kessler, because he's had an opportunity to see your work at first hand. Now... At just what point do you feel the actual rehabilitation of an amputee should begin? At the very moment he's hit. That would be the ideal thing. But, of course, we know that isn't possible. By the time the boys reach us at Mare Island, they have had their preliminary surgical treatment and also a chance to do a lot of thinking and worrying. What worries the most? First of all, they wonder how their wives and sweethearts are going to be affected by their disability. They want to know how their communities will receive them and whether or not they are going to be able to take care of themselves and earn a living. You can reassure them on all those scores? Yes, Grant. We do everything possible to help them. And before the patient leaves the hospital, he must be able to dress and undress, feed and shave himself, lock and unlock doors, drive, swim, dance, write, handle a telephone, earn a living... In other words, be a completely self-sufficient person. That's more than some of them could do before the war. That's very true. We have found that a majority of our patients did not go beyond the 11th grade in school. Many were in unskilled occupations. We want to do more than restore these men to blind alley jobs, especially now that they are older and somewhat changed by their experiences. Our aim is to use the valuable time of convalescence for education and training, for giving them a chance to find the work they really like and are interested in doing, and then seeing that they return to civilian living better equipped than they ever were to take their place in social and business life. Thank you, Captain Kessler. And it's easy to see why it gives the boys new hope just to know that they're being routed to you at Mare Island for their new arms and legs and their new start in life. This is Bob Montgomery. Thank you, Captain Kessler, for the privilege of taking a part which rightfully belongs to you. 
You know, I've been hoping that we could take up spinning those yarns we started out in the Hebrides, and it looks as if we're going to be able to. I'll be in San Francisco the latter part of the week, and I'll give you a call at Mare Island. See you later, Doctor, and good luck. Shenley Laboratories, maker of penicillin Shenley, dedicates this program to the 180,000 doctors of our country, 60,000 of whom are with the armed forces, 120,000 of whom are maintaining the health of all of us at home. In closing, Shenley Laboratories leaves you with this thought. In the peace to come, an important part of Shenley policy will be a continuing program of research. Even now, in the same spirit of experimentation which made possible Shenley's participation in the penicillin program, Shenley scientists are at work on new products, new developments, which ultimately may benefit all mankind. This is James Wallington reminding you that Shenley Laboratories will present The Doctor Fights, starring one of Hollywood's finest actors, Robert Young, in a thrilling true story, Rescue to the Moon, next week at the same time over these same stations. Tonight's Doctor Fights was written by Arthur Miller with music by Lee Stevens. It was produced and directed by D. Engelbach. We promised our fighting men overwhelming superiority in weapons and equipment. We've spared nothing to give them this superiority. We'll spare nothing to keep giving this to them until final victory is won. We must all help pay for the tools of victory by investing every available dollar in fighting war bonds now. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, an incredible and powerful story. And there are still things uh, like that that happen uh, today. There were new stories of people who fought in the um, Afghanistan and Iraq campaigns went through amputations, and uh, were ready and wanting to return to where they had served. Uh, It speaks volumes to those type of uh, heroes in their service, certainly to the doctors uh, who assist them. So this was just a wonderful episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. That will do it for today. If you uh, have a comment, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. I welcome your story or that of loved ones who served during World War II. Ken Curlin provides our opening theme music, KenCurlin.com. I am your host, Adam Graham. This uh, series is provided as a service of the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, GreatDetectives.net.